Hi, my name is Alex Sheldon. I'm the director of the documentary film Hack Montreal. Les gens là, ils veulent du ubiquitous computing, ils sont prêts à avoir Amazon qui surveille 24 sur 24 dans leur maison comme cet appareil. You've surrendered that information. You can't get it back. You can't put the genie back in the lamp. I love the internet. I'm a, a, a child of the 80s, so I saw the evolution of like, you know, BBSs and early dial-ups and America Online and, you know, first personal computers coming into the house and eventually, the, you know, Napster and all of that. So I'm really someone who grew up loving the internet and using the internet a lot. At the same time, I was always somewhat skeptical about a, a lot of things that were happening, especially, you know, around 2006 and 2007 when like iPhones and Facebook started arriving. I was, oh, I became really like at that point a late adopter, someone who's always sort of like a step out, like the annoying friend in your group of friends who's not on Facebook for whatever reason, the annoying friend in your group of friends who doesn't have a cell phone. Um, and uh, yeah, I was always kind of skeptical about what, how these tools were working, why they were free uh, for Facebook and Google. Um, and then when Edward Snowden arrived in 2013 uh, with the revelations that, you know, the NSA was collecting, you know, the internet almost in its entirety and had access to almost anyone's personal communications, or at least the meta metadata of those communications. That for me sort of was a confirmation of what were at that time my, my worst fears, which have now become today almost like banal. Uh, this idea that everything is, is surveyed and everything is like monitored online has become somewhat, you know, banal. Um, but at the time it was really, for me, uh, a, a, an incredible realization that this was indeed happening. I became aware that there was one specific community of people around the world who were the most, uh, the most vocal and the most worried about what Snowden was, was teaching us. And those people were uh, the hackers. I became aware that they were the ones more than anyone else who were at the forefront of the fight for privacy and against surveillance. Yes, some members of the hacker community are somewhat camera shy, and the main reason is that um, they're used to seeing hackers being portrayed somewhat stereotypically or very negatively in the media or in like popular culture. Well, of course, the hoodie is a classic, the cagoule. Uh... Vraiment un manque total d'imagination, hein? Masse d'anonymus, euh, les 1 les 0 qui volent, les chiffres, euh, l'exodécimal. Euh. Hackers have become somewhat, um, you know, on, a bit annoyed by that portrayal and so a bit weary when the documentary filmmaker approaches them to participate in a movie. And so, yeah, a lot of them were initially not interested in being filmed. Um, but when I made it clear, that my intention was not to portray them in that way, but that my intention was to learn from them what their worldview was and what their vision for the future of internet of the internet was and what their worries were about privacy. And one of the ways where you can show them that you're serious and that you are like actually thinking seriously about these topics is that you can initiate yourself to all sorts of alternative encryption sort of tools uh, in a way that you're not put it, putting them at risk um, by being in, in online conversations with, the, with members of these communities which sometimes do are which sometimes are very much concerned about the threat of state surveillance or police surveillance so that's maybe not for everyone but for for some hackers that's like almost a form of politeness where you can show them like I'll encrypt my, I'll learn how to encrypt my emails before I reach out to you. And in this way, I'm showing you that I understand that these topics are not just, you know, they're not just artificial, you know, for some people, it's a matter of life and death, whether, whether your emails are, you know, secure and encrypted. I am basically 
you know, your run-in-the-mill internet user, you know. Like I use Google, I use YouTube, I use Facebook, I use Netflix, I use Wikipedia every now and then. Like I'm, maybe I'm a very sort of savvy when it comes to using the internet, but I don't know much about how it actually works, you know, how, you know, what, are, what the protocols are, what the coding is, how a website actually operates. So I came to this topic from, from that angle, which is basically everyone's understanding of what the internet is, which is basically a very poor understanding of what the internet is. And so when, as I became more and more um, knowledgeable in, in things that for hackers are very, very basic, uh, but things that for the rest of the population might be seen as very technical, uh, it was important for me to sort of bring back this information in a palatable uh, way that most people could, under, could understand. So yeah, like there's uh, all sorts of surveillance, right? Like surveillance today is not just one thing. And when we think of Snowden, Edward Snowden, we tend to, th to think of surveillance as being like the affair of states and, and intelligence agencies. Um, but more and more, surveillance has become just the normal, the way that our economies function normally. Surveillance is not just the NSA, surveillance is also Google and then whatever goes on between Google and the NSA and that's where it becomes more troubling. So it is important because of this to you know build some sort of popular knowledge that this is what the reality that we are living in. A, a reality where we are constantly being surveyed and monitored. You know if it either for investigative purposes or just, you know, for commercial purposes. But we are constantly generating data and that data can be surveyed by the state, by corporations, or, you know, by an abusive spouse. So that's the reality that we live in today. So in that reality, yes, I found it important to, to show to everyone that there are alternative tools, that there are, are tools that are more secure, that there are tools that protect your privacy more in a better way and that a lot of these tools are being developed by the hacker community. The days where they could monitor everyone, everywhere, all the time, simply what the government calls uh, by means of bulk collection, which is the government euphemism for mass surveillance. They say, we just want to collect everything and store it in case we want to uh, search it later. Those days are numbered. We are going to move towards a freer and fairer future rather than simply the one that has already been laid out for us. We are at a decision point, and we could have a very dark future or a very bright future, but the ultimate determination of which fork in the road we take won't be my decision. Uh, it won't be the government's decision. It will be your generation's decision. I think I, I entered this project somewhat naively. I did not fully understand what the realities of producing like a, a documentary on hackers, you know, would be. Uh, and so it was a, a very steep learning curve. Um, I assume it would be the same for a lot of filmmakers where you have your initial idea and as you slowly move into the production process, your initial idea sort of gets slowly deconstructed and, you, and your idea is faced with, you know, the the constraints of, of of what you're actually filming and what you're actually trying to do. And when you get into the editing room, that's when you really sort of have to come to terms with um, with what your movie wants to be and not what you want your movie to be. Being able to let go of what you thought your movie would be and working with what you know it actually is yet at the same time um, staying true to, to whatever led you to want to do this movie in the first place. For me, the most valuable lesson comes from the hacker ethic, from the, the philosophy that surrounds the hackers. Uh, hackers, you know, like I said earlier, are a very diverse group of people, but if there is something that connects all of them, it's uh, this natural curiosity to understand how systems and specifically computer systems work 
uh, for a hacker, it's not acceptable to just remain a passive user of a technology. A hacker wants to understand how it works. It wants to pick it apart. It wants to use the knowledge that it's that that the hacker wants to use the knowledge that it has from picking it apart to build a new, you know, platform, a new tool, and that sort of, you know, drive and natural curiosity for technological systems is, I think, a lesson that I took, and I think it's a lesson that we should all take, uh, and it's a lesson we should collectively take. We should all become a little bit like hackers. We should all be, you know, we should not accept to remain passive users of, you know, all of these technologies that are more and more present everywhere around us. When the world that surrounds you is like fully uh, immersed in the internet and, and technology and you have no understanding of how these tools work, you are setting yourself up to become fully controlled by these technologies. And that's exactly what hackers are afraid of, and that's exactly what hackers are working against, and that's exactly what hackers would not accept for themselves. And I think that that's clearly a lesson that we should take from them.